Hello kids, welcome back to another Mr. Fry presentation. Uh, we have looked at wind. Uh, I did a presentation on uh, sound. This one is going to be on light. Yes, uh, the properties of light. What is it? How does it work? And, uh, and I'm warning you, it's going to be real sciencey. It's going to be really good. Uh, so let's get moving on that. Um, light, like sound, is energy. It's a form of energy. Now, sound is a physical energy. You can, if you close your eyes, you can, and even if you couldn't hear, you would still feel sound. Sound can hit you. It can move things. We showed that in the other presentation. Light is also a form of energy, but it doesn't have a mass. It can't push things. It can't shove things. It can convey energy onto them, as you will see, but it doesn't really push or shove. So it's a bit different from sound as far as that goes. It's got some other big differences too. But like sound, it is a form of energy. If you remember, if we go back to uh, the other presentation on sound, I explained to you that sound travels at about 1,100 feet per second at sea level. This can change, you can slow down, you get higher, it can change with what's in the air. Many things can affect that. That's because it is a physical energy and it can be easily converted and changed and sped up and slowed down by what it's trying to travel through. Light is not quite the same. Light can travel much, much faster. If we had a speedometer like the other one to try and get the speed of light, we would absolutely break it. Because light travels, you ready for this? At 983 million feet per second. Yeah, that's fast. That is why when the lightning went off, even though it was probably a mile away, the light of it, you actually saw it almost immediately when it happened. Right when it happened, you saw it. But it took the sound another five seconds to reach you because that's how much slower it travels. Light is amazingly fast. Now, the light I'm going to be describing is a light that comes from our sun. Our sun is not yellow. Our sun is white. If you go to the space station like this photograph was taken from, you will see that the energy coming from the sun is pure. It is white. That's how it all starts when it leaves. Why we see the yellow sun is because as it comes through our atmosphere, some of it's distorted, it's dispersed, and we see the color yellow coming from it. Um, and that will change also, and we'll see that later on, about how it affects sunsets. So yes, the sun as we see it from the Earth can look yellow, but when you go into space and you don't have any atmosphere or anything in the way, you actually see it is truly bright white. All right, kids, time to get real sciency. Look at this little chart. What is this? Well, I'm going to do my best to explain it to you. When we have the sun up there, it casts its light energy down onto us. Okay, And there's many different forms of energy. So the scientists use this chart to try and measure all the different kinds of energy that come from the sun. It's called the electromagnetic spectrum. Yes, it uses electricity and magnetism. And that's a big word, don't worry, won't be on the test, but it is a spectrum that's used, again, to measure energy from the sun. And if you continue to study science uh, through your books you read and through the education that you get, you'll be seeing this more and more often. So I thought I'd introduce the term to you. But for now, let's look at this chart. Down at the far left-hand side, where the waves are really long, they're called radio waves. Yes, these are the radio waves you've heard of, the radio. The radio uses waves, so does the internet, the Wi-Fi, and this is how the information travels back and forth. Now, why don't we hear that from the sun? Well, the radio waves that we make are very well organized, and when, they're, when we send them out, they make sounds and music and information. Uh, the radio waves from the sun are not organized, so we can't quite pick them up the way we do music and, and talking on your, on your car radio. If we go up slightly larger waves, we have microwaves. Yes, the exact microwaves that you have in your microwave oven. They have a fun little property that when they hit water molecules, they cause them to vibrate and generate heat, which is how you cook food in your microwave oven. Same as radio waves, though. It's not as organized coming from the sun like they are in your oven. So the oven ones are very concentrated and that's why you cook food with them. Look over, oh, oh, to the right, look, X-rays. X-rays come from the sun. They do, again, not as organized and some are dispersed by the atmosphere, but they do come from the sun as well. And finally, over here at the end, we have gamma rays. This is when we're very happy that the Earth's atmosphere disperses a lot of the waves that come from the sun because 
these are dangerous. They're not good for your body. So luckily, most of them do not reach the Earth, and you're not in danger of gamma rays. Unless, of course, you read Marvel comics, in which gamma rays can turn you into the Incredible Hulk. However, those are comic books. In real life, it doesn't go so well. Sorry, Hulk. Now, in this whole chart, there's a section that provides an energy that our eyes can actually pick up and see. We call them colors. And here on the chart is where the colors show up. Right here. Yes, kids. Look at all the energy that comes from the sun. And yet look at what our eyes can actually see coming from it. That little area there, and that's what we call visible light. That is the light that we can see. I'll explain more. Let's keep on going. So this is the light that we see. You saw how big the spectrum was. This is all that we actually can see with our eyes. Let's expand on that. There we go. Okay. So does it look a bit familiar? Possibly like a rainbow? Well, it should. You saw how big that spectrum was. This is what, when we open our eyes and the light bounces off something and comes back to us, this is what our eyes can pick up. Just this small band of the spectrum. That's all we really need. But are there more colors? Yeah. Scientists have figured out that if you go over to the one side where it's red, the next color after that will be called infrared. And if you go do 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 all the way to the other side where it's purple, or actually violet is a proper term, if you continue going, there's another color there called ultraviolet. These are colors we cannot see, but other animals can. Let's take a look at that. Infrared light. Infrared light comes not as a color, but can be best perceived as heat. And by this, if you have the right sensors, you can see heat. And it's called infrared light. This is a picture of my niece taken with an infrared camera. And you can see the heat of her body. You can see on the thighs and the hands and her face. Those are the hottest parts of the body. The rest is covered. She's wearing a winter jacket. The winter jacket releases almost no heat at all. So it's cool. This is a really neat picture. Watch this next one. This is a warm-blooded human holding a cold-blooded gecko. And look at the difference in the temperatures. So the purple is cooler, of course, and the white and the yellow is warmer. And what's really neat, if you look closely, can you see the feet of the gecko? No, you cannot, because the feet have been warmed up by the person's hand, so the feet are actually the same temperature as the hand they're standing on. But the rest of the body that's upright and away from the hand, that's still cool. So infrared light is actually heat light. And some animals have really taken advantage of this. In particular, snakes. Snakes have very special pits. Well, not all of them, but most, but most of the constrictors, the one that hunt warm-blooded animals, have these pits in their face. There's the, the ball python on the right has many of them. The rattlesnake on the left has one. These pits are actually eyes. You could call them that, but they're eyes that do not see colors the way we do, they see infrared light. And when they see things, it's very cool. I'm actually, for once, I'm going to be quiet because this video actually has a narration, which I don't want to interfere with. So watch and listen. They pick up infrared light produced by any living thing. This image comes from a camera developed for military use. The Rattler's heat sensing equipment is 30 times more powerful. What this means is a rattlesnake in pitch black darkness can see the heat of a mouse running by and strike at it and hit it. So they see colors we don't. Let's look at ultraviolet, another cool one. Ultraviolet colors show up in nature the most in flowers. Flowers have patterns that we cannot see. The flower on the left is what we humans see. The flower on the right is what is reflected by ultraviolet light. Now, here's another one, too. Can you guess what animals can see ultraviolet light? Pretty much any pollinating insect. Any insect that drinks nectar from flowers can see an ultraviolet, and they see patterns that we do not. 
That's really kind of cool. And it's neat that people think, oh, the flowers are beautiful. Aren't they nice? Well, the flowers aren't even giving us the whole show. They actually have a little private show of patterns just for the animals that can see in ultraviolet. That's pretty cool. Some animals like this dragonfly reflect different colors under ultraviolet light. So that would imply to you that other dragonflies can also see ultraviolet because that matters to them. And a weird one is scorpions. Almost all species of scorpions reflect ultraviolet light. And we don't know why. They just do. I have gone out with a flashlight that has ultraviolet light coming out of it. And we lift up bark. Uh, this is when I lived in the Caribbean. And you lift up the bark and oh, there's like five glowing things. And they're scorpions. And they're glowing bright ultraviolet light. So it was really kind of cool. Uh, and I asked the people I was with who studied scorpions why. And they, <laughs> they're not sure. They have ideas, but they're not sure. This is a beauty picture of a the remnants of a supernova taken by the Chandra Space Observatory. It's a, it's a satellite that takes pictures like this. This is the neat part. If we looked out in the sky at this area, we wouldn't see anything. It would look pretty normal. There might be some fuzz that we can see because this explosion is in many different lights that we cannot see. This explosion includes gamma rays, x-rays, microwaves, and, and radio waves. So the satellite uses an eye that can see all of those that we cannot. And it might take radio waves and make them blue. It might take the x-rays and make them purple. It might take the radio and it would basically it would assign a different color for each of those different kind of waves that we cannot see. And it looks like this. So it's really neat that we can, we can use satellites to see things that we cannot see coming from space. And when you often see these beautiful, beautiful pictures of the cosmos, they have been translated into colors that we can see. Because otherwise we can't see half of the beautiful things that are happening out there. Our eyes are just not made to pick it up. Now, one thing people ask me is what's light made of? It is made of something. The smallest piece of light that you can have is called a photon. A photon is a tiny element of light. And when light is released by the sun, it's released in photons. When they're released by our flashlights, by uh, the lights around us in the kitchen, this is what the light, the photons of light, and they carry all different kinds of energy, like I said, and are the ones that hit our eyes that have that right kind of energy are picked up as colors. Now, if you're a Star Trek fan, you might have heard of photons before because the Enterprise uh, used to shoot photon torpedoes, an idea of Gene Roddenberry's. And no guess that look what the photon torpedoes look like. They look like bright light. His idea was that a photon torpedo would be a torpedo made of light, light energy that apparently would have been very destructive. Uh, no, they don't exist, but in Star Trek they did. Now here's a neat thing to think about light, how we can see it's energy and how it contains energy is you got two people, one wearing black and one wearing white. You will probably experience this outside in the playground, especially in a hot area like Austin. It's a really hot day. And for some reason, the person in black gets really, 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 really hot. Oh my gosh, it's so hot out. And the person in white is okay. Why? Because the color black, when light hits it from the sun, including the visible spectrum that you and I see, the black color absorbs it. It does not reflect it. It takes it in and says, give me your light energy. I'll hold it. And it generates heat. And so it's not just the colors that we see that absorbs. It absorbs other ones too. And it starts to get warmer because all the energy is being absorbed by the shirt and you get, whew, you get hot. White does the exact opposite. It reflects all of the energy, all the all light energy, which is why it looks white. And you don't get as hot because it's not absorbing as much. It's reflecting a lot of it. And this is, this is true. You go out and try it sometime. Wear your uh, School in the Hills white shirt one day and wear your School in the Hills dark blue shirt and just stand in the sun. Stand there long enough and you'll notice the difference for sure. And so that's a great example of how the sun actually and, and light is actually energy. And you can capture that energy as heat just by wearing a dark colored shirt. 
Finally, I got one more. It's not finally. I got two more things. This is really cool. A neat, a neat trivial fact that you can share with people. Moonlight. Moonlight. When well, let's 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 get a closer look at the moon. When the sun reflects off of the moon, what color is the moon? It's kind of grayish white. The entire thing. There's no other colors in the moon. There's no flowers. There's no plants. That's what color it is. So when the moon reflects its light back onto the earth, it can only reflect one color, grayish white. That's it. There's no other light that we can see in the spectrum that's coming back to us. So when you're outside and there are no other lights, just moonlight, that's it. You are actually colorblind. If you want to know what it was like to see the world in black and white, go out in the moonlight. You will see no colors. Everything will be a shade of black and white. So that's a really cool thing to go out and try. And uh, because that's what color the moon is. If the moon was red, you would ever see everything in the shade of red. If it was yellow, you'd see everything in the shade of yellow. But it's not. It's, it's white and gray. So this is what the world looks like in moonlight. Colorblind. One more thing to show you. One more really cool thing. The Earth has a nice atmosphere around it. When light comes across and hits it straight on, as you see here, the light goes straight through and we see it as a yellowish color. Go out at noon or, you know, in the middle of the day, and that's probably what you're going to see depending on the clouds out there. Don't look right at the sun to figure this out, and it's not good for your eyes. But it'd be a general yellowish color. So what's with sunsets? Why is the, the, sun, the sun that's yellow during the day suddenly turn orangish or red at a sunset? Like, whoa, what's going on? Did it just change its color? No, of course, it not just change its color. But the way the light reaches us absolutely changes. When you have a sunset, it hits right at the edge. And here, get a bigger picture here. There's a person, and the sun is coming down. And actually, there's rotating, of course, but in this, in this set, it's going to look like a sunset. It's heading down for a sunset. When the light now comes from the sun, it's going to hit the atmosphere at an angle, and it's going to, as it passes through the atmosphere, the weaker light, the light that's not as strong. Yes, you can have stronger light and weaker light. The weaker light gets broken apart. Oh, here it goes. Boom. Here it goes. Some color gets scattered and sent back into space within the atmosphere, but the light with the longer wavelengths, the red, can power its way through. And these are the colors that you see. As it travels through the atmosphere, you see the yellow up above? That's why you would have seen yellow up there. But as it travels through the atmosphere at sunset, it has to travel through a lot more, and a lot of the colors are scattered and dispersed and go away. But the ones that, like I said, are strongest can power their way through and still make it to us, and those are the colors in the orange and the red area. So a sunset looks like this. Oh, I blocked out part of it. Sorry, guys. But that's why they're traditionally orange and yellowish. And they can be different colors depending on the amount of clouds, depending on the pollution, things like that. But that's why a sunset is that color. You're never going to see a blue or a green sunset because those colors just can't make it through. <coughs> Excuse me. Tea time. And, of course, this fellow goes, hey, beauty sunset. And the, the sun does not change color. Just the amount of color that reaches us is what changes. So, I know that was very sciencey, but I hope you guys totally enjoyed it. Uh, there will be some follow-up for this, and um, I don't know. I thought that they recommended me making this uh, presentation, and I thought, hey, it was a bright idea. <laughs> Come on, I had to get at least one pun in there. You take care, kids, and thank you very much for watching this, and I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.